Welcome once again to Architectural Engineering Student. And what we have here is a Pony Speculative Furniture Design. This is a bed and ball. And it's for grade level only. It's a concept and it fits in a 16 foot by 16 foot by 8 foot room. And what says here, this is said to be a prevailing air pattern and the earthquake wave direction is this way. And that's for this section here. This particular uh, was said to be a uh, you know, half a dome condition that occurred here. Actually, quarter dome, actually. Quarter dome condition. If it was this way and the air pattern was going that way and, and the earthquake way, then that would have a different type of resistance than it would if it was this way. This is more air pattern resistant this way. <clears throat> and so, what we have here is what's said to be a single bed and the radius here is six feet. There's storage that occur either side of the bed. And there's some structure here and say, well, maybe it'll fit in a foot or so in our concept. It says, but see structure, well, it's not to scale or anything. This is a, a cross section that way. And then this here is a cross section, you know, kind of lengthwise. And here's the bed and the storage that occur there. And there's some space here that occur past the bed. So any falling debris might you know, miss the bed and the one's feet that are there. And that's said to be three feet, and the bed is about six feet, and this way is whatever it is there. We think it can fit in a 16 by 16 by 8 foot room. And the whole thing then gets welded together as a mission elevation thing. It kind of looks like the entrance in an il apart from an igloo or something. It's something like that. But this isn't necessary for Alaska. But the other thing is, it's also not for the desert, it's for a fresh water region only in non-desert. <clears throat> and the idea behind this is that one could sleep in this particular structure inside their building and if their building collapsed then the debris from the building would not end up on their bed. And so we have this condition that said to be this thing here had to do with some kind of a, a pound per square foot, whatever that happens. That was the weight, I think, of the, the TS Conger. This, it's, a, it's not a column, it's an arch, and you do side by side, and they all get welded together. And then when you have a, a, a quarter dome, then there's some distance that occur there, and some special cutting and welding occur. And then the, the thing that's the cladding, when that occurs, it has to have a certain thickness. And just a, the cladding span is to be more than 12 inches. And then the rest of this is about, well, how thick is that cladding supposed to be? So we have this condition here that ended up being a certain weight per square foot, 356 pounds per lineal foot at the, the slab condition. We said, well, that's, that's a heavy thing, but it's something that the slab and the soil can accept in that condition. And so then we said that therefore the slab was okay. And so in this condition here, the span's 12 inches, and the limit, the deformation is L over 1,000, and then that's 0 0.012 inches. And then the module elasticity is in steel, and that's said to be 29 million pounds per square inch. And then the, the question is, well, what is the moment of inertia of the section? And we can find that out by this equation here, the delta limit, is WL the fourth over 12 EI, and that's the, the condition where the W is equal to a thousand pounds per square foot. And that's just kind of an estimate that we're using in our concept for the thing. If something fell on the thing, well, we don't think it'd be more than a, a thousand pounds per square foot. In particular, if it was, say, to be a single story tree part building made out of the conventional construction provision materials. We, we just don't think it would be more than a thousand pounds per square foot. And so we input these things here, what isn't known as the I required to have this deformation limit occur. We have 0 0.012 inches, that is, times 1,000 pounds per square foot times 12 inches of fourth. This is the span of the cladding. And then times one foot equals, one square foot equals 144 square inches then divided by 72 times 29 million pounds per square inch. We are requiring 1,000 pounds times 12 inches of fourth divided by 144 times 12 
times 72 actually, times 72 times 29 million pound per inch times 0 0.12 inches and some inches cross off there top and bottom and I multiply by the top and bottom by inch over inch then to get rid of the certain things in this very bottom the receptacle there they, which is the proportional statement in pound per inches the squared that occur there and so then I have the I required then is equal to 1,000 pounds times 12 inches a fourth divided by 144 divided by 72 times 29 million times 0 0.012 and my equation then is I equals BD cubed over 12 because it's a rectangular sacrificial cladding. The B is 12 inches. That's you know, by uh, the thought process and a, a unit condition in breadth and I chose 12 inches. And so then I have this condition and this this whole thing here, the I required equals 0 .00, 0 0.0057 inches of the fourth. We have 0 0.0057 inches of the fourth times <coughs> 12 because I'm Substituting these things into this equation divided by 12 equals d cubed. We have 0 0.0057 equals d cubed. D equals 0 0.0057 to one third, and I get a depth of 0 0.1789. And I say, well, maybe a quarter inch plate will work. But up here, I said I'm not going to use a quarter inch plate. I'm going to use a half inch plate for that condition. That's what I feel comfortable with. I looked at it, I, I tell you, man, I've seen a quarter inch plate. I, I know the condition about what's 12 inches. I said to myself, would a quarter inch plate, even though it's bigger than 0 0.187, have me feel comfortable about the thing that I'm doing? I said, no, I like a half inch plate. So I said up here it's going to be a half inch instead of a quarter of an inch. So that's this time, as it is, an architectural engineering student would say to me, kind of out of the box condition while still living in a rectangular length building is this kind of a bed vault that occur that someone could sleep within and to in the effort to protect them from one thing and another in the harsh in, uh, environment if their building didn't happen to work out to be all that good but what did this cost when well, we said the material for this thing this particular enclosure the bed vault about fourteen thousand dollars of labor was forty three two hundred. The facility was eighteen thousand four ninety two. It was eighty thousand zero sixty nine. And then there was a design cost for the thing, and not the preliminary spec of building design and, and furniture design, but the very tedious condition that PhDs in structural engineering do. And that ended up being a cost at twenty thousand nine thirty six. It added to that to your cost there, it ended up being the, a cost of more than 80064 The total cost in retail, the whole number there multiplied by 1.7, I think it is squared. And so we get the total retail cost for the thing being 252317 Now that's said to be the total you know, project budget for the thing. And Without the retail condition, be this eighty thousand plus this this uh, twenty one thousand thereabouts, be a little over a hundred thousand dollars, and worth it to some people, not worth it. If you're going to sell this thing as a product at a retail store, fabricate at a at a, a facility, and then sold to a, a wholesaler, then sold to a retailer, and then sold to a customer, well then it would be something like two hundred and fifty. $253,000 would be the budget for that. Well, that's this time in architectural engineering students.